So this is part two of the 66 Sears Custom 6 and the 74 or 75 Roper RT8. So the two, fr two front frames are there all painted, two rear frames, hitch plates, fenders. I made both side covers for them, so that's kind of, that'll be kind of nice to actually have side covers on the Customs instead of just nothing, because them are hard to find. And then uh, rattle can the inside of stuff like these fenders. And then the outside got the automotive paint and the clear coat. You probably see all kinds of orange peel looking stuff right there. And that's because all this stuff is very rusty. So it's just going to be that way. Um, the fenders for the Roper are right here. Them turned out pretty good. Of course, since they were made, they have all these rivets on there. You can't really weld that stuff other than the little tack weld because you'll just burn through it because it's so thin. I made these hoods yesterday so that's the next thing to do is to clear this red stuff out of here and then paint these eventually but uh this one the uh, subscriber sent me the inserts of it so you can see how them got welded in they just got little teeny tiny little tack welds so it doesn't burn through the metal so this one will probably go on or i'll make two of these hoods there's this one and then there's this one that has Basically the same inserts, but you can see the difference. Um, uh, this first one here has, this one has the correct inserts. Uh, the second one here has like inserts out of like an ST16 or ST12 hood. And then this last one doesn't have any inserts other than homemade ones. And that is for a 18.6. So they all have the hood latches in them. They all latch really nice on the on the uh, grill, it's a lot of work out. Um, transmission for one of the customs, and the other one's actually in the shed. It has a bunch of red overspray on it because I forgot it in there. All this stuff here is supposed to be painted black. And then uh, in here, probably mentioned this at the end of the last video, but I upholstered a seat for the custom, or not the custom, but the, the RT8. So that's gonna get this little low back seat. Need to flip it upright and put some weight on there to get that wrinkle out of it. And then I upholstered a seat for a Super 12. Um, can't tell it because there's a gas can sitting on there for getting wrinkles out of it. Grill for the Custom, you probably saw that before in the last video. The hood for it, and then the dash. A couple of red items I already brought in, all the tires. Hood for the uh, Roper RT8. So, I guess that's about it. I'm going to come back when I get some progress on something. Okay, so you can see I got that frame put together. I got the seat spring put on. So basically all I did on this one, this is the Custom 6. Got the rear frame and the front frame put on. And then on the Roper, basically the same thing, except I got the transmission in and the steering column put on. Front axle is right there, down there, ready to go in. Thought I'd paint the steering column on this one black, because I figured since these Ropers are supposed to have a black dash like this one that uh, it would look kind of funny with a red steering column poking through the black dash so I just painted that black don't know what color it's supposed to be but it'll be black now front axle I thought I'd do black because I always like the looks of uh, the red ropers the 76 and 77 with the black accent pieces so I just went ahead and did that nothing on these are trying to be original they're just trying to just be what they are kind of a thing it doesn't matter if they're not perfect so i will come back when i get some progress on that one and then when i come back this one will probably look okay. like that one okay so i made some progress on them you're looking at the custom right now the roper is over here it has front tires on it and the steering stuff put in no rear tires yet steering seems to work steers both ways that's good. Uh, these tires are probably going to get changed out that's on the front because it has four lug hubs on them. And I want to use them on a different project some other time. So probably going to swap them out with the tires I planned on for this. Them are just already attached to the spindles off of that ST10. So that's just what I ended up putting on it. And then I realized that that spindle is actually bent. So I can bend that back or just put a different spindle on it because I have others but I'll probably try to bend it back first 
So on this one, I already got the transmission in. My next thing to do is to put that cotter pin in for the high low range lever. And then uh, basically I start at the back and work my way forward. And then uh, front axle steering. I had to make a whole new tie rod. The part that goes, puts the two tires together. Cause I was drilling out, so this is the new one. Has just a hole on each side. This is just a piece of metal metal rod about, I don't even know, half inch or probably three quarters of an inch thick. It's pretty thick. It's thicker than the original one was. The original one is over here. I was starting to, you can see on this side, I drilled a hole through it. And I was starting to uh, drill a hole on this side and then it's decided to just break. And then I'm like, well, on how rusty this thing is, I'll just make a new one. So that's what I did. I found this one, which I'm pretty sure is off of another custom, but it's about, I don't even know, about from my finger to the end too long, so it must not be from a custom, it's off of something else. And here's another uh, tie rod end that uh, I had to drill out. So, these tractors are in pretty bad shape, so the tie rod on that, I actually found upstairs. The parts department, it was like brand new. It had both little rubber boots on the end and everything, so that was a good find. So I'm gonna get this one pretty much looking like that, and I will come back and show you it. Okay, so I made a bunch of progress on both of them. So you can see the custom. I got the fenders on, dash, steering wheel, front grill, and all the steering parts. So it actually steers. It would actually be a rolling chassis right now if I were to have the tires on it, but they're not painted yet. So, they're not on it. What took me a good amount of time was this lettering here in the front. It's still not perfect, but it's whatever. Um, I didn't have any brush paint in black, so I just used the automotive black. It seemed to turn out pretty good. I will have to uh, come back with a clear coat, though. Once as it's all done, otherwise it'll be just a dull, ugly black, but so far it's still nice and glossy. Yeah, you can see it's definitely not perfect. And it took me a long time too, but I guess just just don't look at it that close. So, down the middle here, I don't know what it's supposed to have, but it's supposed to have like aluminum tape. And I think I have some, I have just a little bit right here. It's like, that's what was on it was something like this. So I'll have to get some more. But yeah, this roll is just basically wide enough. So it's kind of nice and shiny. So I have to figure out exactly what that's called and get some more of that and then I can put that up there, trim it to fit. That should work out nice. Um, haven't even talked about engines for these yet. So this one is going to get a Lonson 212. So basically it's the same as the Predator 212 except it doesn't say Predator on it, it says Lonson on it instead. And this one is going to get a Honda 5.5 horse. So... I wish I had a 6 horse Tecumseh and a 8 horsepower Briggs, but I don't have that right now. So I'm planning on eventually, especially on this one because this is all original, at least finding a 6 horse Tecumseh, that would be awesome. Because I like my things all factory. If Unless it's, you know, cobbled together like that one is, then it, I don't really mind if it's not factory. But if it's all original kind of bothers me not having the at least the same style as the original engine so eventually i'll at least find like a five or six horse briggs for it if anything them seem to be a little bit more common and easier to get running but on the roper i keep pointing the camera camera at it but haven't talked about it got that little seat on that i keep laughing at because it's like why even bother having a backrest on it it only goes up like an inch i need to set something on here to stretch the vinyl so it sits flat and I got one of them custom made three points that I made in the last video put on and even though I made this three point myself and made it so that it would fit these fenders I still had to put four of these washers that I have a ton of on the back of the three point to space it out otherwise it was going to hit that backing plate so it works works just like it's supposed to doesn't hit anything. Well, I guess it kind of hits the fender. I had to bend the fender down a little bit. And then uh, one thing I do have to figure out on these fenders is it wobbles quite bad. I mean, 
I used, I forget, it's either 10 or 11 gauge steel to make these fenders. It's about the same thickness as the hood, but I haven't figured out how to make these fenders strong. So it's like, I don't know if, if anybody has a roper with the square fenders, like, is it pretty normal for the back of the fender to be kind of wobbly? Because, I mean, no matter how thick of metal I use, I can't get it to not be wobbly like that. And I didn't do any kind of supports really on the inside. Maybe the originals have like a, almost like a something going up through here maybe. I don't know. But I was thinking on making some kind of attachment point down there to kind of help it because that's really wobbly. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get a few more things done on these. Probably paint the wheels. And then put the wheels on, and then I'll come back once the them are done. Okay, so I got a lot done on the Custom 6. So it now has an engine in it, all four tires, a seat. I actually drove it, and it drives very nice. I actually had to make my own clutch. So I bent that a little bit just to give it a little bit more clearance there. And since this tractor never had a belt tensioner right here, I just said, I guess I don't need one because it never had it. The uh, the old rear frame, so this section, never even had a hole right here, which is why this isn't cut out, so I guess it doesn't need it. Throttle cable is backwards, so that's kind of dumb, but I guess it's whatever. Uh, clutch works really good. I'll show you the clutch that I made, because I made one for the roper too. So this looks just like the clutch for like the Suburban or SS any of the other ones besides the custom so this is the piece that I made I made two of them and then uh, if I get get it off here this is the factory one so it's basically same gauge of metal mine's a slightly thicker but you see basically there what I did copied what was already there and uh, made that work and then this is the bracket that that goes on and that just bolted to the top of the battery tray Kind of like that, and there's your clutch. Oh, and I guess I made a rod to go from down there up to there with a cotter pin going through it, and then the original style spring. And it uh, works really good, it has a lot of spring tension on it. I drove it around, uh, doesn't slow down when it goes up a hill, so that's good. I got, I think, this is the same as it was, the three point hitch is on it, and that's about it. So I'm going to get the hood put on that one, the three point put on that one, and then I'm going to do a few things on this one and I will come back. Alright, I've been very busy. Custom 6 is done enough that it can be underneath the cover now. Hood's on it. It's basically, it's all done, except for just like some minor touch up paint decals just some cleaning and then uh, I messed up the three-point hitch the paint on it so uh, I have it painted I just got to put it on so basically just clean up paint or uh, yeah clean up slash touch up paint decals three-point hitch uh, these two uh, Suburban tens at 66 and the 67 for a very long time I've had the wrong pulleys on them which uh, were these five inch pulleys that were kind of too big. So I I bought a bunch of four inch pulleys off Amazon pretty cheap. So I put them on. So both of these have the correct size pulleys finally. And then uh, I have another one extra for the engine I ordered, which will go for that one. That one's supposed to have like a three and a half, but it should be perfectly fine with a four. Um, if anything, I do have a three and a half, but there is the part number if anybody cares. But these are really nice steel pulleys. The only the only issue is that when they paint them, they paint inside the the hole with the three quarter inch uh, bore on it. So you got to sand the paint off to put it on the shaft. So the roper, I have this gas can on the seat to stretch the vinyl out so it looks like a seat three point hitch is on tires are on so this side has the custom hub that it's supposed to have and this side has one of them hubs that likes to split in half and 
make your tire fall off and you know bend up your fender and then uh, I just put the three bolts in there out of the five to match the other side I still have to do the steering wheel clutch engine um, and I guess mount the hood because it's just sitting on there so the homemade roper grill actually looks pretty decent I'm gonna just make some chrome inserts to go behind there to look like headlights instead of putting rear headlights in, or uh, real headlights in there because it's just a pull start model and I'm not sure exactly what they uh, use to blank that out so I'm just gonna make some chrome inserts for that but uh, that's actually it for this video because these tractors are just about done this one is done I'll show it to you actually on so that's what it looks like um so yeah the other one will basically look like that but slightly different but uh, next video, they will both be done. So yeah, thanks for watching.